How's it going guys, it's Kevin. I'm back with yet another video and I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking to yourselves right now, what is happening? Kevin is uploading a second video just a week after the last one and that's right. I guess I'm kind of officially back now or at least hopefully I'm going to be. Uh, sorry about the lack of uploads in the past but now I'm really going to do my best to try and upload on a weekly schedule so please, please, please try and hold me to that in the comments below. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to be trying to upload at least one video every single week. So let's see how that goes. So I thought it makes sense to shed some light on the three different things that I think I've learned that are super important over the last four years in software engineering, in case you guys are just now starting your career in software engineering. And speaking of shedding light, I actually want to thank BenQ really quickly for this lamp that they got me that's right here. So you guys can't see it, but it's right below the, the lens of the camera. And this is a lamp that I've been using probably for like at least six months now. You guys might remember from past videos, I used to have a lamp from them that would actually sit on my desk. And I actually like this lamp even more now. It's a screen bar plus. And it's great because it takes up no room on my desk. And there's only one little thing that I have at the very back of my desk, which is like a dial. And it actually just sits on my monitor arm. So this lamp takes up absolutely no space. And I love it because you can sort of like adjust the temperature and the color of the light, as well as like the actual intensity. So thank you guys so much for sending me this BenQ. Now let's get back to the video. So I think the first thing that I really just realized kind of, I guess, like after four years is I was like, wow, like this has been four years. I can't believe that it's already been four years that I've been a software engineer. But at the same time, when I actually think about my entire career, I have so much time left to go, right? I have so much time left to work. And that was the first thing that I really started learning, I think, actually reflecting on this experience, which is that careers are really long. And I think when I first came into college, I never thought about this. I never realized this. And so I always felt like I was going 100 miles an hour to figure out what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be, and then sort of try and take the shortest distance between A and B and sprint that distance to get to point B. And while that's really good, I don't think it's like a very sustainable way to go throughout your career. And I think because of that, you're gonna, I don't know if you're gonna like burn out necessarily. You might go through different periods of burnout, which I think I've already experienced in my career, which is probably not great only four years in. But I also think it's just no way to really enjoy your career long term. I think it sort of like leaves you always looking to the future and always looking for more, as opposed to just enjoying, enjoying the present moment that you have right now. And so it sounds really cheesy, but I think it's pretty important to sort of like have a goal, have a North Star that you're driving towards, but at the same time, don't be super compelled or worried about reaching that North Star right now. Because again, presumably you're gonna have a long time to actually work towards those goals. And as you're gonna sort of realize as well, like you're gonna actually make a lot of progress uh, in, a, in a pretty short amount of period of time. So like for me personally, I really wanted to get to Google uh, after graduation or just in general in my career. And so I was actually able to do that, you know, within four years of graduating college, which in the grand scheme of things is nothing. Right. And so I think it's really important to just remember that careers are long and it's it's important to have goals and to set goals. But don't worry too, too much about reaching them immediately, because, again, you have such a long amount of time to actually try and achieve those goals. And similarly, in the same vein as actually the fact that careers are long, I think it's also important to note that if you're actually going into your first job right now or you're trying to get your first job right now or you're in your first job right now, it's OK if you don't like your job. And I wish I wish someone told me that when I was at my first job, because I always thought like, you know, I think it's just, it's just easy to extrapolate and to, to sort of catastrophize and think like, wow, this is my entire life. This is what my entire career is going to be like. This is what the real world is like. And so I think especially coming out of college and going to my first job and being in the middle of New York City, it was kind of a shock. And and I think I wish someone had told me that before, like. It's okay if you don't like your first job. You have plenty of opportunities to change throughout your entire career. You probably will, and you'll do so successfully and probably move into other companies that will make you happier in the long run anyways. So don't stress too much about your first job. Do what you can to learn from it. Do what you can to take the good from it and move on to other experiences. And just remember, most people actually don't like their first job, and that's okay. The second thing that I really wish I sort of focused on and understood coming out of college was that it's important to work hard and to make money and to sort of like make a living. But at the same time, you have to have a life outside work. And I don't want to like, I feel like I'm going to put this in the wrong light because now it's going to sound like I don't have a life outside of work. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to focus on the things that make you happy outside of work if your job cannot do that already. And so just for your happiness as a human, I think it's really important to actually have things that you're looking forward to that's outside of your nine to five. And so I think the people who really hit the sweet spot are people who love their jobs and then also have good communities and friends and family and things and hobbies that they can do outside of work. But I think it's really important, especially if you're in a job that you don't love, it's important to not try and live for the weekend. And I think I made this mistake a lot where I was like just dreading the nine to five, trying to go in Monday to Friday, get my work done. And then I was sort of like, hoping, you know, I had planned Saturday and Sunday, or I was really looking forward to Saturday and Sunday so that I could do the things that I like actually wanted to do. 
And I think that's a really bad way to go about it. I think you should really try and make sure that every single day you're doing things that make you happy. And in a lot of ways, you actually have control over that. And I, I took a class in college I thought was really interesting about the science of happiness. And it sort of showed you there was one exercise that we did one week that just told you to pay attention to things that made you happy. And a lot of the things I realized with that day to day, there are very small things that will make me happy that will genuinely improve my day. And I have a lot of control over whether or not I do those things. So one of those things for me was like walking in the park when I was in college. I really liked to walk through Washington Square Park, whether it was to go get a meal, walk back to my dorm or my apartment, or go hang out with friends or whatever. Anytime I could walk through a park, I tried to make that a priority. Similarly, I also noticed that having coffee in the morning was like a really weirdly important thing to me and not even for the fact that I needed to wake up. I just really liked the ritual of like having a hot coffee and luckily that was a luxury I could afford every single day. And so I would either buy a coffee or make a coffee in my apartment. And I realized that that was another thing that I had direct control over that affected my happiness and it was important to me. So try and really focus on the things that actually make you happy and don't rely on your job necessarily to do that. So for example, a really easy thing I, I was able to do was like go out to dinner with friends or maybe it's watch my favorite show at night or it's go to the gym and do my favorite chess workout. Whatever it might be, there are definitely things that you can do throughout your day that can make you significantly happier if your job doesn't do that already. And I think this next and final point is something that really is tied closely to the second point, but I think that you should try and maximize your happiness, not your money. And I think that I'm in a very fortunate position right now where I can say that because I think a lot of people have to worry about money day to day or people have to worry about paying their rent or their bills and that's very understandable. But I think at a certain point, especially if your career, right, if you just sort of zoom out and think about your career as a whole, like these 40, so, 40 or so years, you know, that you might be working, I think you have a lot of time, hopefully, to like become financially independent. And something that I've realized over the past four years is that in a lot of ways, it's sort of like a rat wheel. Like you might be making way more money than you need to live. You might be making way more money than you need to actually live and do the things that you want to do, right? Pay your rent, go on vacation, buy a snowmobile, like go skiing, do whatever it is that might make you happy. And you might still want more. And so I think it's really important to sort of like pay attention to those thoughts and think about why you want to make more money. because. At the end of the day, it's endless, right? You can always make more money. There's always someone who's going to be next to you who's probably making more money than you. So eventually, if you get to that point where you actually are financially independent and you're able to do the things that you want to do, just I would recommend being conscious of that and try and think to yourself, if you do want to go to the next level, why do you want to go to the next level? Or if you do want to get promoted, why is that? Do you want more money? Does it come with more responsibility that you're excited for? Are you actually genuinely excited for the opportunities that that next level might bring you? Or are you really just trying to like get to the next level to have the extra 50,000 or $100,000 or whatever the number might be? to have in your bank account. And I think that this point is pretty important for a couple different reasons. I think first of which is just that if you actually love what you do, you're never gonna work a day in your life. So like hopefully instead of maximizing the amount of money that you're making, you're actually maximizing making yourself happy. And by doing that, you're gonna find a job that you love, that you're really good at because you love it and you wanna work hard at. And then, you know, sort of tangentially related to that, if you're good at it and you like it and you work hard at it, you'll probably make good money doing it. And also just sort of what we touched on before, which is that after a certain point, I think there's actually tons of studies on this as well. Like after a certain amount of money that you make, your happiness sort of only marginally changes. Whereas like the difference between making $50,000 and $100,000 a year is probably really pretty astronomical in how that might affect your happiness or the things you're actually able to do day to day or in life in general. But after whatever that X value is, your happiness only sort of marginally changes. And so I think it's really important to pay attention to that because it's like, why do you want to make more money? Why do you want to keep running on this wheel? Why don't you just take that time that you're now afforded because you have this luxury and this money to go do something that you actually really enjoy or love instead? And this probably goes without saying, but there's actually obviously a whole lot more to life than making money. And I would recommend that you, instead of sacrificing that time to make the extra money, go and take that money and go enjoy it, you know, doing things that you love with the people that you enjoy doing things with. All right, guys, so I think those are the three big things I sort of have learned at a high level throughout the last four years of being a software engineer. And again, these things really apply to like anyone going into the field right now, whether you're a software engineer or not. And so I think those three things really were the fact that just careers are long, right? Don't sweat accomplishing a 40 year goal in maybe two or three years, right? Set your goals appropriately and just remember, you have a lot of time to accomplish what you wanna do. And if you set your mind to it, I'm sure that you can accomplish it, but don't really sweat it too much, right? It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time and you're gonna be able to accomplish the things you want to if you just keep working hard. The second one is to find happiness outside of your job, right? Because again, if you're not happy during your nine to five, it's really important, especially if it's like your first job or something, try and find things that make you happy outside, right? Life's too short to not be happy. And the third thing is to just maximize your happiness, not your money. I think at a certain point after making X amount of dollars a year, whatever that number might be, 
money only changes your happiness very marginally. So I think it's important to take that time that that money's afforded you and actually go spend it doing the things that you love with the people that you enjoy. All right, guys, so that's it for me. Those are the three things I think at a high level I've learned throughout the past four years of being a software engineer. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Rex on, Rex on, Rex on, Rex on.